Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. A telephone call was held today between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and Russian President Vladimir Putin. His Majesty the King and President Putin reviewed the deep-rooted and steadily growing friendly Bahraini-Russian relations. They also discussed the latest regional and global issues and developments. They also stressed the importance of the concerted efforts of all to achieve lasting and comprehensive peace in a manner that would guarantee the interests and national security of all countries while tackling OPEC Plus group commitments. His Majesty the King and the Russian President underlined the importance of continued coordination and adherence to the group's decisions. His Majesty the King emphasized the importance of activating channels of dialogue, negotiations and peaceful solutions to reach peace and development for all. The commander of the National Guard, General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, met with the commander of the 5th Corps of the Pakistani Army, Lieutenant General Mohammed Saeed, at the Corps headquarters in Karachi, Pakistan. The National Guard commander commended the advanced level of cooperation between the National Guard and the Pakistani Army, stressing continued efforts to further boost bilateral relations. Discussions focus on issues of common interest and ways of bolstering cooperation and coordination at all military levels. The Corps commander briefed the National Guard commander about the situation in the uh, flood, uh, flood hit regions, including uh, Sindh province and the rescue operations there. He also thanked the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, and the Bahraini government for the financial support to the affected people. He praised uh, the distinguished military cooperation between the two brotherly countries. The National Guard commander asserted Bahrain's unwavering support to the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, stressing solid ties binding the two brotherly countries and people. The Kingdom of Bahrain joins the world on October 1st every year to celebrate the International Day for Older Persons, which was approved by the UN Secretariat General in 1990. On this occasion, the Minister of Social Development, Usama bin Ahmed Khalaf al Asfur, emphasized that the Kingdom of Bahrain is among the developed countries on the Arab regional and international levels in its strategic vision for care and development services provided to the elderly. The Ministry of Social Development stressed that this is in line with the provisions of the Constitution and the developments witnessed by Bahrain within the framework of a legislative and legal system supporting the comprehensive development march led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Kingdom of Bahrain joins the world today in celebrating the International Day for Older Persons, which was approved by the UN Secretariat General in 1990. The Ministry of Social Development affirmed Bahrain's leading status at the Arab regional and international level in strategic vision concerning the services provided for the elderly. It stressed that this is in line with the provisions of the Constitution of the developments witnessed by the Kingdom within the framework of a legislative and legal system supporting the comprehensive development march led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and supported by His Royal Highness. Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The United Nations shows resilience of older persons in a changing world as a theme for this year's commemoration and in order to shed light on the ability of the female elderly to face the environmental, social and economic challenges and boost awareness of their contributions to the society. The Minister of Sustainable Development, Noor bint Ali Al Khalif, stressed Bahrain's keenness to launch initiatives and strategies aimed at adopting innovative green solutions so as to achieve the sustainable development goals and balance between economic growth and sustainability of the natural and environmental resources. The Minister was speaking during her participation in the dialogue session on sustainable development in the Kingdom of Bahrain, which was held within the activities of the 8th session of the World Green Economy Summit, being held in the UAE under the theme leading climate action through cooperation, the roadmap to achieving carbon neutrality. The minister said that the Kingdom of Bahrain has made big strides in implementing the sustainable development goals, including those related to energy, finance, food security and youth, which are the focus of the summit in line with the principles of the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030, which is based on sustainability, competitiveness and justice. Al Khalif also spoke about Bahrain's commitment to implementing plans and projects related to climate change. At the conclusion of her participation, Al Khalif pointed to the importance of exchanging information and experiences and strengthening partnerships with various countries to reach achieved solutions in all sectors of green economy and sustainable development. 
She indicated the continuous keenness of the government to redouble efforts in order to achieve the SDGs and to emphasize the adoption of smart solutions to contribute to maintaining the sustainability of a clean environment. The Undersecretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, met the Acting Assistant Secretary of State for Near Eastern Affairs, Dia Lambert, and the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for Israel and Palestine, Hadi Amr, on the occasion of his visit to Washington. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah affirmed the keenness of the Kingdom of Bahrain on strengthening cooperation and strategic partnership with the United States of America, in addition to enhancing relations across all fields for the benefit of both countries and their people. He also discussed coordination and perspectives with regard to regional and international matters of common concern by means that reinforce international peace and security. He pointed out the commitment of the Kingdom of Bahrain in line with the diplomatic vision of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa to developing international partnerships in order to bring peace and stability to the Middle East and to foster dialogue, coexistence and mutual respect among countries, in addition to enhancing the historical gains of the Abraham Accords and providing a safe, stable and prosperous environment for all people of the region. For their part, Yael Lambert and Hadi Amr praised the solid Bahrain-U.S. relations and the progress they are witnessing, expressing their appreciation for the pioneering role of the Kingdom of Bahrain in promoting a culture of dialogue, tolerance and peaceful coexistence in the region and the world. The delegation of the Kingdom of Bahrain participating in the 66th regular annual session of the General Conference of the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, held from the 26th until the 30th of September 2022, headed by the permanent representative of the Kingdom to the agency, Ambassador Dr. Yusuf Abdel Karim Bchiri, met the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Rafael Grossi. The Ambassador praised the constructive cooperation between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the International Atomic Energy Agency through technical cooperation and capacity building programs which contributed to achieving sustainable development goals. The ambassador expressed his sincere thanks to the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency and the IAEA's Board of Governors for their follow-up on the region's issues in nuclear field, and especially the Iranian nuclear program. At this, as this file is directly linked to the security, safety and stability of the world, Rafael Grossi expressed his appreciation for the Kingdom's keenness to implement all technical requirements, praising the list of supports provided and its encouraging achievements, wishing the Kingdom continued progress and prosperity. The chairman of the Legislation and Legal Opinion Authority and executive director of the 2022 election, Councillor Nawaf Abdullah Hamza, announced the readiness of the supervisory committees distributed over the four governors to receive citizens wishing to run for membership in the Representatives Council and for membership in municipal councils during the scheduled period from Wednesday the 5th until Sunday the 9th of October 2022. Hamza revealed that in implementation of the decision of the Supreme Committee to supervise the safety of elections to set up a special mechanism for those who wish to run for the coronavirus COVID-19 in the same legal period. A mechanism has been identified to ensure that they exercise their constitutional right to run in the light of health and precautionary requirements in order to preserve the health and safety of everyone. Concerning the details of this mechanism, Councillor Hamza said that the affected person wishing to run must contact the hotline 772 772 to book an appointment with the supervisory committee according to each governor and then fill out the nomination form available on vote.ph. In addition to attaching the required documents. On the other hand, Hamza urged all those wishing to run for elections to ensure compliance with the requirements stipulated in the law, as well as to ensure that all documents required to be attached with the nomination application are in place, noting that all the requirements and documents required for candidacy are available on the official election website www.vote.ph. The Arab uh, Parliament has re-elected Adel Asumi as Speaker for an additional term during a meeting held at the headquarters of the Secretary General of the Arab League in Cairo. The Arab Republic of Egypt re-electing Asumi for the second term comes as a result of his sincere efforts and ceaseless uh, parliamentary work 
during his first tenure as speaker. In this regard, al Asumi extended his thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, affirming that winning the presidency of the Arab parliament reflects the prestigious standing of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its democratic model at the international level. He also hailed the support of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, which reflects the royal vision to reinforce parliamentary work and the status of Bahraini parliamentarians across all fields. Al Azumi vowed to continue efforts to solidify the standing of the Arab Parliament within the framework of joint Arab action as its legislative and supervisory arm, in addition to activating the role of the Arab Parliament at the Arab regional and international levels and building upon its accomplishments. In our international news, the Arab Interparliamentary Union, the IPU, issued a communique hailing the success of Kuwait's parliamentary elections held last Thursday, which has embodied the loyalty, allegiance and democratic sense of the Kuwaiti people to continue the development march and reform in all that serves reinforcing the political and constitutional institutions by means that reflect the well of the people and their aspirations for a more advanced and prosperous future. In this national occasion, the IPU reaffirmed its confidence in the awareness and determination of the Kuwaiti people in exercising their democratic rights in the form and substance. It also asserted its readiness to support the brotherly state of Kuwait, its leadership, government, parliament and people. The IPU hailed Kuwait's democratic march and sincere endeavors to reinforce the fraternal and joint Arab work, as well as increasing the active parliamentary participation at the Arab regional and international levels. Saudi Arabia's Minister of Culture, Prince Bedr bin Abdullah bin Farhan, held talks with his Jordanian counterpart, Haifa Najjar, on the sidelines of the UNESCO World Conference on Cultural Policies, Policies and Sustainable Development, Mondia called 2022 in Mexico. At the beginning of the meeting, Prince Bedr congratulated Najjar on the Jordanian city of Irbid being chosen as the Arab capital of culture in 2022. He also praised the success of the Jarrah Festival for Culture and Arts and thanked Najjar for the support in organizing the Saudi Cultural Week in Jordan from September 12th until the 15th, stressing the depth of the relations that bind the two kingdoms, their governments and their people. Prince Badr also met with Iraqi Minister of Culture, Tourism and Antiquities, Dr. Hassan Nazim, where they praised the depth of the relations and stressed the importance of strengthening joint cultural cooperation. The Saudi Minister of Culture, Prince Bedr bin Abdullah, also met with the Mexican counterpart Alejandra Frasato Guerrero during the UNESCO World Conference on Cultural Policies and Sustainable Development on Mondia Cult in Mexico City. The meeting saw the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the Saudi and Mexican ministries of culture to strengthen cooperation in a variety of cultural fields, including heritage museums, visual arts, libraries, performing arts, theater, books and publishing, translation, fashion and culinary arts. Every year, International Coffee Day is observed on October 1st to celebrate and promote the use of coffee. The day is marked to celebrate the coffee sector's diversity, quality and passion. It is an opportunity for coffee lovers to share their love of the beverage and support farmers whose livelihood depends on the aromatic crop. Every year, 77 member states of the International Coffee Organization, dozens of coffee associates and millions of coffee lovers come together to celebrate their favorite beverage. The day also aims to promote the fair trade of coffee and bring the plight of coffee growers across the globe to the limelight. For the first time, International Coffee Day was celebrated back in 2015 and was launched in Milan. However, different countries celebrate their own National Coffee Days on different dates.